Okay, now people should be able to hear you now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, Western Chauvinist and the Knicks. Hey. Hey, there we go. Everything's fixed. All right, let me just turn you down just a tiny bit. Perfect. Okay, everybody can hear you. Welcome. Dylan, let me just get your name up on the screen real quick here. Um, How are you doing? I hope you're doing all right. All things considered, I'm still kicking. I'm still healthy. Just had some taquitos, so I think I'm doing okay. Damn, tackies. Delicious. Delicious. Um, oh, good night, Soft Heather. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for coming by. You, you, you're all good. So... You're doing good. I'm glad to hear you're you're feeling well after everything. I'm sure that was a very um, unpleasant experience, but also probably very informative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very informative about what it's like on the ground, what it's like specifically is informed my position on the Proud Boys very much so, and um, what it, what it's like to be at one of these one of these types of events. It has informed my position a fair a fair bit. Mm -hmm. So do you want to give us the uh, rundown? I know a lot of people from my channel were watching your um, your retelling of the story earlier. I watched that as well before I got onto stream. What did you think about that? Um, I thought it was really good. Um, you you uh, were very thorough, very fast, and very much stayed to the point, which I appreciate because I am a rambly motherfucker and I always lose track of my thoughts. But um, – my God, we, we were, while we were doing, while we were streaming the other day, this was um, on the big Among Us stream that I did. Right after that, we had Dylan Burns watch. So we were, we were popping in and watching your um, updates, your live tweets and whatnot. And um, yeah, my, my community here uh, thinks very highly of you. They've said uh, lots of nice things in the chat. I'm sure you can probably see that, but. Man, only, um, only if I thought highly of them. If only. Damn, if only. chat, listen to that. You gotta, you gotta impress Dylan. They'll, they'll keep coming back. They will, they will. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy, uh, <laughs> you wound me. Oh no. Um, yeah, no, like, uh, fuck. Like, yeah, I, I, uh, the Ooh, other day, I love, that's my new catchphrase. Dunderheads. Dunderheads. Oh, that. Good Such term. A good one. It is a good term. F fucking fantastic. Dunderheads is so good. Um, but also like, uh, we did a section, um, Actually, it was right after we, we saw you updated. I did my section that I prepared for my debate with uh, the infamous Proud Boy Suspect Sushi. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, when I prepared for that, um, I just decided to turn it into a segment. So we did a full-ass segment. And I'm going to put that up on my YouTube so that people can learn just how fucked the Proud Boys really are as an organization. Because their basic entire purpose is to... You know, I'm not going to say they're like a terrorist group, but their job is to instill terror. That's what they do. They go and they hurt people, and they go and they terrorize uh, people who aren't doing anything wrong. And that's their basically entire purpose. And their organization, um, from at the very bottom all the way up to the top, um, is absolutely full of anti-Semites and racists and transphobes and sexists. Um, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah. Yeah, I heard I heard through the grapevine that you were getting some shit from suspect. Is that true? <laughs> um, I wasn't getting shit. Chat was was arguing with suspect because they know he's a proud boy. Yeah. And um, originally in, in DMs, he was like, I was like, uh, thanks, buddy. You're chill. And I was like, you might not think I'm chill after today's segment. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, I would probably just be misinformed. And then he found out I was there, and he was like, Oh, that's different because he was in DC too. Oh, maybe he um, maybe he maced you. Maybe he maced me. Maybe maybe. Yeah. Listen, uh, as he, far as I he know, was he getting didn't back at you for uh, for not giving him easy lefties to knock down. Maybe maybe I will I will say from what I know, he was not involved in any of the uh, clashes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So do you want like a quick retelling? Do yeah, you yeah. Want give, us a, give us, give us, yeah, give us the retelling. Yeah, we'd love. To, I'm sure my audience would love to hear it. Those, are, even those who probably heard it, would be fine. So uh, I'll do a shorter version since um, my my full version will be going up on my YouTube soon. It should be this upcoming morning. Okay. So just look out for that. But basically, I I went to D.C. during the Million Maga March in a Biden Harris hoodie. Um, you can think of that what you will. If you don't think that was a very bright move, I understand why. Uh, not um, going to victim blame. You have a right to wear a Biden hoodie. All those people were wearing MAGA hoodies. You're fine. True, true. So I go there and I stumble upon the counter protest, which is at BLM Plaza. 
Um, while there, it was very peaceful for the vast majority. I saw a few scuffles, but nothing of huge note to mention besides one hat snatching, I believe. Okay. And then later, uh, we started to march, and there was some conflict with some diners. A firework was thrown near the diners. Okay. Um, uh, there was a little conflict near the Hilton, and as time went on, um, the protests kind of moved all across the city and, and marching. There was, and across it, there was like a, a few scuffles. Mostly, most of it was just hat snatching, or burning like a hat and stuff like that, like um, laser pointers, Roman candles. Nothing uh -huh. that really caused any damage. I didn't see any windows smashed, any businesses smashed, any cars smashed, okay. anything like that. Yeah, because um, no we were property also, damage. Um, while we while we were watching your thing, we were watching another journalist, a Portland journalist, who um, traveled to document the Million Maga March, and um, she ran into some proud boy, or not proud boy, she ran into some, like, unknown Maga people who had face masks and were carrying, like, guns and stuff, and they were like, oh, yeah, the Antifa were shooting up hotels. Did you, uh, did you see anything like that? <laughs> I did not see any Antifa shooting up hotels. There was yeah. a scuffle outside the Hilton Hotel, but th nobody got hurt, and the police stepped in very quickly. So I have figured. a photograph of that, so uh, I didn't see any guns. The only firearms I know of that were in possession by anybody were in the possession of uh, Trump protesters, Trump people, uh, as far as I know. I didn't know of any lefties with guns. I believe there was one lefty with a knife at some point, but didn't stab anybody. Okay. So, so we protest, Sorry. we go around protests. And there's, you know, the normal police tactics of they have the bikes out and they divided us at one point from some Trump protesters. They screamed, get a job. We screamed, how do you spell loser M-A-G-A? <clears throat> Love it. Yeah, it was a really good chant. Love it. And eventually we kept traveling around. And let me just get to the part, which is the thing that most people uh, are talking about. Yeah. Which is the um, later um, my phone was dying and tear gas, uh, not tear gas, uh, flashbangs were deployed. And shortly after, we kind of moved along the, the road some more. And when we stopped for people to catch up, we were just kind of standing in place. We see some people kind of start rushing towards us from a few blocks away. And I look over and I see the Proud Boys logo. And oh, that was boy. the first time I saw the Proud Boys. I saw them one time earlier in the night. And at that one point, they tried very hard to fight us, but the cops stopped them. This time, there was no cops. So basically everybody who saw them, me and a few others included, started yelling Proud Boys because we were this, informing everybody that the Proud Boys were coming. Okay. And so the S.H.I.E.L.D. people moved quickly to the front uh, just in time, but not fast enough because there were some people who were still out in front. A Proud Boy tried to sucker punch someone in the back of the head who I saw had that. their hands in their pockets but missed and fell on his face. <laughs> um I saw right in front of me, there was somebody who rammed straight into the shields who were slowly backing up. They were not going offensive uh, right. on anybody. Um, I uh, got maced. Uh, the mace was shot right next to my head. Holy I, shit. Uh, but thankfully, most of it just got in my hair, so I, I was okay. fine. That's good. Um, there was a few clashes. The person who rammed into the shields got hit with a pole from somebody else. And uh, thankfully, the shield people got in front fast enough that people who got hurt were able to retreat fast enough to the back to kind of stay safe. Wow. And after a while, we kind of disengaged, but the cops really did nothing to to like intervene until it was like until after the scuffling had basically stopped. Yeah. And I examined the situation of what happened, and there were people uh, around the area who were hurt. Specifically, I saw a, a uh, kind of a white guy, uh, skinnier than me, but around my size, uh, whose head was busted open. A Holy girl shit. who must have been like 5'5", five, five, had her head busted open. Um, she was, I kind of tried to talk to her, but she seemed to be in shell shock. Another guy who was kind of uh, uh, clad in black was completely passed out against the wall. Um, I got a medic for him, but I don't know what was with him. I, I asked him what was wrong, and he just kind of vaguely pointed to his face, but he couldn't really speak. Yeah. So that I, sounds I, like um, shock. Yeah. Possibly, but he he. It's, I don't know really exactly what occurred there. And then that's when I was walking, and I heard she thinks she was stabbed, 
and I see this girl grab her sleeve and slowly roll it up, and under that is a huge knife wound in Holy her shit. in her arm, and she looks at it, and in her head she kind of registers that she was stabbed, and she puts her hand over it, and the pain immediately registers on her face like it was adrenaline, like stopping her from yeah. realizing that, that happens, she was, yeah, that it happened, and she just starts like writhing in pain, and at that point. I kind of just ran down the line yelling, where's a medic? Because all the medics were already busy. Somebody was stabbed. We need a medic. Someone was stabbed. We need a medic. Someone was stabbed. Holy shit. And I run down the line yelling that as loud as I can. And um, I know the cops heard it. And But while I was doing that, I look over and I see the Proud Boys are moving and they're trying to flank us. Holy and shit. so we're still trying to treat the wounded. But Proud Boys, which we would later find out, were outnumbered us four to one, uh, were currently trying to flank us. And I uh, tell a police officer who responds, um, not at all, just kind of ignores me. Nice. And so I go back up and I kind of say, they're flanking us, they're flanking us. And we're still kind of busy treating the wounded, people who, like, their faces were busted open or, or the, of course, the girl who was stabbed. Um so thankfully we were able to move fast enough and the cops did intervene and stop them from flanking us but we were able to get a few a uh, full view of how many proud boys there really were in comparison to us and there were a lot more proud boys than there were counter protesters at this specific engagement Oof, uh there was scary. about 50, 50 counter protesters 200 um proud boys or proud boy affiliates oh my god they pulled them all and, they pulled them all in yeah um and the thing is all these proud boys are protesting these were not locals yeah right. these were people from way out of state all the but basically everyone i talked to who was part of the counter protesters not everyone I, th I think i met one person from jersey but they basically all of them were from the dmv area most of them were local people who cared about the community who lived in the community when we interacted with the community we got honked horns we got people waving out Side their cars they were very supportive of the counter protests yeah. dc went 93 percent for biden it is blue country 100 yep. percent. it is not sympathetic to the the trump um the trump presidency rejecting the results of the election whatsoever and they're certainly not sympathetic to the proud boys yeah i mean these trump protesters the next day would tear down blm monuments on blm plaza Oh my god! I didn't um, even hear to, about that part. Two victims of yeah, I, I took pictures of it. If you Holy want to see those, shit. yeah, if you've got them, yeah, I'll take a look at them. That'd be uh, I have to I'll see if I can get on them. Yeah, quick. if not, I can show them tomorrow or not tomorrow, but on Wednesday when I do my extreme on Wednesday. So, um, we are treating the wounded, and we just see how many there are, and then police officers kind of come over. And, they're, and they must have heard someone was stabbed because they're like, where's the person who was stabbed? And I look around and I don't see her anymore. And what I figure out is that she's she doesn't want to basically be treated by the police. Fair enough. Yeah. That she was but the, she was just stabbed yeah. by a proud boy yeah. and is so untrusting of the police that they won't, she won't even let them treat her wounds. Yeah. Well, because a lot of times being, they'll just arrest you. Imagine being having so little faith in the police that you, you, you you're stabbed, yeah, and the first thing in your mind is, well, let me make sure the cops don't get me. Yeah, it's a really bad state that we're in. Yeah, um, I here's the uh, footage. This this is uh, me and Lycan came. This is the second day. Okay. Uh, we yeah, came yeah. a little bit later after this. After BLM basically, the BLM DC basically asked for people to gather afterwards. Um, which we did. Okay. I'm so. Really there we go. Live stream. Okay. So let's see. Oh, here's this thing. Okay. Let's take a look. Here, let me pull it up on the screen real quick. Got it. Watching it right now. Yo. The police don't even care. Oh 
why the fuck aren't they doing anything about that? Holy shit. Well, I mean, we know why. Pour down a sign on there that said no Belarusian authoritarianism in America. I found that very interesting. Holy shit. But yeah, <sighs> they, they come in people who don't live in our community, don't live in our area, and tear down the signs put up by the people. Yep. Who... Invasive. Who felt pain and wanted to express that pain through putting up monuments on an area called BLM Plaza. And these people who complain so much about the outside agitators come into a community who doesn't want them there, voted against them, came here to reject the results of a democratic election and to cause shit. Mm -hmm. They come to protect the area from Antifa terror, but they're the ones who incited the terror. They're the ones who ended up destroying monuments people put up in pain to express themselves. They are the fa in the Antifa. They are the <laughs> fascists. That's about as fashy as it gets, right? So, I, uh, me, me and, um, after the, uh, Proud Boys kind of just like yelling at us, like, you're lucky the cops are here, a bunch of death threats. Um, I, uh, shortly after I leave with a group of seven people, we travel in groups because we did, we could get jumped, uh, during traveling. Um, I took a huge risk going by myself. Yeah. Um, so they were kind enough to kind of provide me like protection as I, as I went and left. Yeah. And so, um, we, while going home, we passed some cops and one of uh, the people I was with said something along, like, good job tonight. One of our people got stabbed. Oof. And they laughed. That's uh, so and... fucked. Yeah. That's yeah, so fucked. And so I went to the Metro and that's when I went home. And then the next day I went and I, I did a whole thread on that. And there's this whole other thing where it's this, where they had speakers at this hashtag walk away um, um, event. Yeah. Which is basically telling Democrats to walk away from the Democratic Party where they literally say they call for bloodshed. They compliment the Proud Boys for the work they did the night before. And it's just just a pulpit beating of violence, violence. The Democrats are the enemy. There will be bloodshed. This, that. Uh, they're the demon rats. All that. Doing prayers, calling, like, basically Biden a, a Chinese um, agent shill uh, spy shit. against America. It was some of the most off their rocker things you can imagine and the whole event of just seeing people from outside our community who are rejecting the results of a democratic election are going into a community that have voted 93 percent for biden a community that doesn't want them there they go down and destroy that community's monuments they put out put up to express their pain and then stab community members who didn't like them being there and express that yeah, the Proud Boys and all other similar groups are reprehensible, and they are a they are part and parcel in what is making it more difficult for this country to become a country of peace and of justice. Do you think? Do you think that any of those people who were violent towards locals, who stabbed locals, who maced locals, do you think any of them? Are really going to be kicked out of that organization? Do you no. think they're going to be really reprimanded? They're going to be punished? Oh, of course no. Not. no. It's going to be encouraged. They're going to be applauded. They're going to be called heroes. They're going to get pats on the back. It's a it's a, it's a, an environment of violence. The next day, organizations that are not even the Proud Boys thanked them for what they did. Said Trump they were was punching them. Said they were punching back. Yep. The President of the United States gave this organization a shout out, and he basically called me and everybody else out there scum. Yep, I saw that. We were raging. We were raging at those Trump tweets when during while while we were watching the doing the Dylan watch because it's so fucking it's so fucking sick. It's so fucking distorted. It's so fucking far from the truth. And and, and like you said, these are people who are they are they are the very invaders that they talk about, and when worse so, they talk about outside agitators when when we're when they're talking about you know, peaceful protest, but they literally go across country to go find people to hurt 
in the name of Donald Trump, in the name of MAGA, in the name of quote unquote Western chauvinism, I think it's disgusting. And um and I by the I, way, yeah. very I saw like two Trump supporters in with masks. Yeah, yeah. I heard you talking about that. Yeah, they don't fucking wear masks at all. It's ridiculous. Can I, I just you... read you a few of the a few of the notes that I have from the walk away speech? Yeah, please do. Go for it. Um one second. They chanted whose streets our streets in a community that doesn't want them there. They talked about removing all anti Trump politicians from office. They did stop the steel stop the steel chants. Um, the speaker said that they were willing, they are going to use force, going to force the swing states to set Republican electors to the Electoral College. And if they don't, there will be no Electoral College. He then said if Trump does not win that, they will fight it in the legislature. The next speaker complained about losing Twitter followers before plugging themselves. The speaker after that talked about how they lost friends that have been bullied online. Mm. Then the cops arrived. Then uh, the speaker talked about how Democrats passed mail-in voting in the middle of the night, how Trump warned everyone of the threat of mail-in voting, how the Democrats are stealing it, complaining about dead people voting and stop to steal votes. They warned of communism. Um, they warned of a country looking like BLM Plaza in D.C. before calling Antifa a terror group. Says yesterday Antifa showed its terror. Uh, by the way, again, I had to get medical help for a girl stabbed by the Proud Boys. Yep. And she then said that D.C. is turning into MAGA country. D.C. went 93% for Biden. Even if you added every single protester to the Trump vote in D.C., they wouldn't even get 10%. Even close. Yep. Uh, speaker talked about how they proud they are for people coming all over the country. So again, reinforcing this idea that they're not from the area. Invaders. Fascist invaders. Speaker accusing Biden of being a Chinese communist agent. He's now claiming Hunter Biden laptop story is true, and he's complaining about Biden calling Antifa an idea. Biden's right, by the way. Biden is speaker, correct. Next speaker gave praise to the Proud Boys who stabbed a girl last night, saying they will punch back. Themes started to get scarier. Um, and let me see if I can find actual footage, because there is footage I found and I posted. Yeah, if you've got it, we can watch it up on up on the. There was also a pamphlet handed out from the Larouche back <clears throat> that talked about how British banking controls this country, and Biden is a servant of British Bank. Well, uh, I. Yeah. That's, is that a JQ thing? Like, I think so. I think it has yeah. to do with the Rothschild, Rothschilds. Yeah, I think that's a yeah. I was gonna okay. say that sounds JQ. Here, here's the speech. Here's part of one of the speeches. And this is not even one of the most extreme moments of this of the whole thing. All right, give me one second here. I'll there bring it up real quick. There we go. Give me a second. All right, one second. Here we go. And let's uh, let me get it up on the screen. And we'll give it a watch real quick. Got the sound. All right, let me start it. All right, let's give this a watch. This is the what was the speech called again? Where, where did they, walk what was the away. Group? The, walk the walk away. away. The walk away. The okay. walk away movement. I just want to make sure I got the, the group right. This is the walk away speech. Or part we of are it. not deep state agents. We are Americans. And right now, it's your time, America. It's your time to rise. Whether Donald Trump wins or not, it's your time to rise. Because we will not go down without a fight. We will not go down without bloodshed. Whoa. I don't care. I don't care. The media can take what I say and say that I'm violent. I don't care. Antifa and Black Lives Matter brought us to this point. Holy shit. I just had if they want to fight, then they got one. I think I've been here before. Because I'm not afraid of these communists. I'm we are Wow. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, just see CTV's response. What a milk toast, weak response he has to that. Wow, bro. I can't say that I'm surprised, but I can't also say that the frustration with the system, media, and political agenda isn't justified by normal, everyday Americans. This entire system of communication is way too divisive. Something has to give to restore peace. I'm. I will say this. Fucking CTV. That um, I'm happy at least that he's condemning it. Uh, which is more you than think that's a condemnation. Taking... That doesn't sound like a condemnation to me, Look, I, especially uh, below. I mean, it's, it's better than what I got from a lot of other people. Yeah, that's fair. 
That's fair. Because I can tell you, I've gotten, you know, we know where you live, we're going to fucking get you, stuff like that. Um, a lot of going after the fact that I'm a rape survivor. I saw that, um, unfortunately. Uh, a lot of that. But they try too hard. They really suck at this. Like, the, 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 the way to get it would be like, I don't really know if you're telling the truth. It's not like you're a liar. Da, 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 fuck you, get raped, Lamau. Yeah. Because every time it says that, I can tell they're trying too hard, so I just the like, clown on them. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I think I think I've told you just about just about everything. If you've got any questions, uh, or if Chad's got questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, Chad, if you have any questions for Dylan, let's uh, let's let's give him some some good questions. Um, you know, the only thing I'm uh I wanted to ask you about is um. I saved an article to go over on my next stream about the Oath Keepers and how the Oath Keepers, um, someone leaked uh, part of their, um, or, or a couple of leaks about how they work with the police. And the Oath Keepers have been making a massive move to ingratiate themselves with local police all around the country um, in order to, you know, have some favorable treatment. And um, I can't help but think that the experiences you had are somewhat indicative of that favorable treatment that we see this can, over and over again. There's a story about a proud boy possibly being stabbed. We don't even know if it really happened. Um, I th because again, the news articles are now questioning it, but that happening and that they got to ride in the police cars and went through the community and got to pick out culprits. Wow. Holy um, let shit. me see if I can find it. If you look up stabbing um, PC, it should be one of the first things that comes up. Like, it's like man stabbed, at least 21 arrested after 21 a million mega march. Uh, but if you – let me see if I can find it. Yeah, if you can send it, I'll read that, and then maybe we can talk about it on the next stream. Because I do – one of the next things I'm going to do is I'm going to – my plan is to do a um, – like a series basically. I want to have a whole series of videos where I talk about – um, each of these different right-wing groups we're seeing mobilizing because I have a feeling that I don't know We did a segment today talking about Donald Trump and how his legally and electorally He's dead in the water. He has no legal path to victory. He has no electoral path to victory And yet it doesn't look like he's actually giving up and the groups Here, that are following him don't the seem article, like they're giving up. Oh, yeah, thank you Um here we go. Uh, I do have a couple questions from the chat for you. So uh, sure. first of all, one comment from one of my wonderful mods and community members, Gayfesh. Dylan, we love you. Please stay safe. Um, we had a question. Um, what are your thoughts on other countries looking in at all of this and feeling worried? Um, I would say that it makes sense for the world's uh, most powerful democracy to see people rejecting that violently. Of rejecting the results of a completely open and fair democratic election to have people from other countries scared scared but i hope that that same solidarity that many of us americans showed to the belarusian protesters to the hong kong protesters to the current the protests going on now in peru to the protests uh, all around the world protests in colombia protests all across the world i hope that same solidarity is shown to us as um I really do hope so, but I but I hope that they're they're giving it the concern and attention it deserves, because right now what we have is a president who is rejecting to accept the results of a democratic election, and a group of thugs on the street beating up and stabbing locals because they can't accept the results of an election either, and then tearing down the monuments yep. that a community put up to express that pain. That it, we cannot sugarcoat it. That is what's going on. And while uh, Trump's options of maintaining power continue to thin, the avenues for far-right violence still lie open, obviously, even in communities that, yeah. are, that completely reject their ideological bent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next question I have um, was, let's see here. Uh, hold on, let me grab all these. I just want to make sure I'm getting all of them. Um, Okay, here we go. How do you maintain your safety in these dangerous situations? And um, along with that, um, there's another question in a similar vein you could probably answer. How do you process watching people get injured around you without going into a total panic, oh, God, I'm going to die here mode? Um, I would say, so ask me the second question after I answer the first one. Sure, sure. So, so I probably going in the Biden hoodie is probably not the smartest move, but it's my country. I do what the fuck I want. Um, so I went there in the Biden-Harris hoodie. 
And uh, I would say that the first thing you should do is don't try to go to these things alone. Try to go with someone else. On the second day, I actually went with Lycan and uh, somebody else who ended up coming along. So there was three of us, which made me feel a lot more safe. He brought equipment. He brought a med kit. He is a medical professional uh, from the military. He was a medical professional in the military, so he, was, he has a lot of medical skills. And I felt a lot safer with him. But while I traveled in groups on the ground, I felt so much safer. And there's no way I could have dealt with a lot of the stuff that was going on if there was not there groups there to support me, people who gave me phone a phone to call my family after the stabbing occurred to tell them what was going on and that I'm safe. Um, it was very helpful. So traveling in groups, um, not getting isolated is pretty important. Like staying with the group, trying not to go through the groups, um, uh, the other groups of, of the other people. Um, while, while you look like obviously you're with the others, like maybe if you're wearing plain clothing, you can make your way through it if you keep yeah. your head down, but try to stay on your ideological <laughs> defense side in the middle. Don't try to get isolated at any, at any point. Absolutely. And uh, travel in groups. Uh, try, if you don't want to be on the front, stay away from the front. Kind of stay somewhat back. In the middle is probably usually the safest place to be because if you're at the back or on the sides, you can get flanked. But in the middle is usually safest because it gives you that many more avenues to kind of move around and escape. Listen to people around there who know what they're doing and look like they know what they're doing. Um, listen to Try to listen to the people around you. Uh, take in information and process it slowly. Don't uh, overreact uh, quickly. And um, wear masks. Uh, wear a mask uh, for, for multiple reasons, but mostly for, of course, the coronavirus, because the Trump people will not be wearing masks. Um, so I would say the main thing, though, is most certainly, and this is going to be something that I always push, is don't go alone. Go in groups. Because I, I left in a group of seven, because there was a high chance that if I went alone and they saw me in the Biden Harris hoodie, I could get jumped. Yeah. Yep. Smart call. Um, that is the sort of number one rule strength in oh, numbers. And go there with a fully charged phone because you might have to call someone for an emergency purpose. Yes. <laughs> True. Um, let me get another question. Or the other question was how do you, um, how do you process or, or handle watching people getting injured without going into total panic mode? I don't, I don't know how to, I would just say, take a deep breath and think about what's the most rational thing to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. What is the thing you can do that helps the most? And for me, when I saw that, the first thing that popped in my head was look for medic. There's no medic around there. So I ran down the line when I saw that person was stabbed and yelled and informed everybody in the block. We need a medic. Someone was stabbed. We need a medic. Someone was stabbed. So every, there was no way the medics didn't hear me. And when I went back, there was like three medics on the person who was stabbed. Uh, and so That's good, at least. Yeah. Uh, I would say that sometimes you might break down. Just take a second. Take the time you need. The last thing you need to do is panicking in a situation where people are trying to flank you. Um, uh, afterwards, if you need to have a breakdown, you can do it afterwards. But not during those pivotal moments. Um, I might be able to offer just a small amount of advice on this as well, just to piggyback off of what you said. Um, I've been in a lot of situations that have been incredibly um, high pressure, and the, one of the best things you can do is focus on action. When you are in a moment of intense, like sort of intense pressure, think about what you need to do, and don't worry about all the other things. You don't have time to think about what ifs. You just focus on, what do I need to do right now? Um, I was... I've. This is kind of complicated, but I've literally like saved my own life once when I was involved in a really bad um, ve vehicular incident. And um, it literally just came down to me like I was I was driving and a bunch of shit happened and I literally just went complete focus and went, OK, I just need to focus on staying alive in this moment. And if you focus on the actions and not necessarily on everything else, you can often, you know, increase your chances and the chance that you'll be able to process that at your own time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Later, when I felt more secure, I kind of just talked to people like, holy shit, somebody was just stabbed because in that moment I was just kind of moving, trying to get that person medical attention. And I think Demon Mama was right on point, like concentrating on the actions you're doing or what's the next thing you're going to do. Um, next question. Um, what do you think is the possibility of Trump or another far right person or group um, involving PMCs or mercenaries to carry out violence? 
if that's a, if that's something you can answer. Um, private military contractors. I w- I wouldn't be able to say that. Uh, there's no precedent for that. I guess you could talk about the the you know the Pinkertons. Yeah. Um, but the only example of the Pinkerton shooting somebody was actually a right wing protester uh, this this election season. Um, but you know, by purchasing bodyguards of that sort, could, of course, can happen. Uh, but I, I'm 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 mostly more worried about the militias. Um, the less regulated, the more dangerous. So yeah. far, yeah, for sure. Um, and that seems like those types of groups are sort of thriving in the chaos that Donald Trump has made right now, which does have me very, very concerned. I mean, you know, Dylan, I've been talking about this has been kind of my beat for a couple months. So every time I come on your panels, this is all I fucking talk about. But um, yeah, I do worry about that a lot. Um, next question was, Dylan, what do you do? You have any thoughts on what will become of these groups in the near future after inauguration or in the next couple of years? I don't think they're going to evaporate. I think there's a good chance that they kind of they maybe you know shrink. Yeah. Um, as maybe you know, there's not as much attention being dragged to them. I don't think Joe Biden is going to particularly be recruiting for the Proud Boys. Yeah. Um, the Proud Boys aren't going to fizzle out though. These organizations are still going to exist. The militias always kind of existed, even during Obama. Um, they just grew f- tremendously, and more splinter groups occurred, and more and more organizations occurred. So I, uh, we might go into more like an Obama era, like level of militias where it's reduced somewhat, but they don't mm-hmm. go away. It could be an in between between Obama levels and Trump levels, mm-hmm. and I would say something like that makes sense yeah. because I don't see the rhetoric dying down, and I think the avenues towards extremism still exist enough to give them enough. Uh, "Quote unquote new blood to continue to maintain or, or at least not completely like just fall out." Yeah, I do think that the uh, the rise of networks like OAN and stuff like that is really concerning to me because it creates a a more extreme like reality bubble um, for them to keep keep fueling their anger and and that zealotry. Um, yeah, it's so tough. Um, so this is, that's all of the questions that had to do specifically with the event. Are you okay with fielding one sort of foreign policy question while you're here? Uh, sure. If I can answer it. Yeah. What, what do you think about, um, uh, the reporting that the New York times did? I think it was today about, um, Trump discussing the attacking an Iranian nuclear facility. Have you heard about this yet? Um, it's not super surprising. I have not heard about it, but the, um, actually this is interesting because, this was something that was proposed to Obama during his term. Uh, this isn't really talked about often, but uh, the the state of Israel actually proposed to the Obama administration um, that they that they wanted a military guarantee that if they were to strike Iran and Iranian nuclear facilities, that that we would back them up if something was to occur, and we would not do that, and that eventually led to the Iran deal happening. Um, Obama, but Trump, of course almost struck them over the shooting down of the drone. He was able to kill Soleimani. Um, and the state of Israel, while not publicly saying it, has very obviously the Mossad has been doing cyber attacks on nuclear facilities throughout the land. Yeah. It would not surprise me whatsoever if Trump was planning to attempt to do that, planning to do it if he was not, uh, not if he wasn't going to, if he doesn't go through with it or was at least considering it. Yeah. Um, not surprising whatsoever and kind of lines up with his current policies. Uh, yeah okay so thank you for that answer i think that's all the major questions that we had um but i really appreciate you coming on um i was i'm about to wrap up for the night uh was there anything else you wanted to drop for us or or anything you wanted to leave people with like a thought or um i guess i guess the only um thought i have to have to leave them with is um that you live in an area you have your community and being there for them when these types of things occur when people who have no concern about what your community looks like when they leave have no concern about the people who live there have no ties to it it is important to defend them that doesn't mean you need to do what i did Mm -hmm. you could just be dropping a few bucks into some 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 people on the ground who need it it could just be going there and giving people water it could be deploying med kits in the area. It could be just no, maybe t- 
teaching some people in your community the medical training necessary to teach to treat gunshot wounds yeah. it could be a, a lot of things um but being there for the community who was there to support you and help raise you or help or help house you now is super important yeah it is so important and so if something like this happens in your community like it happened in mine i hope you'll be there to support them yeah um a lot of people are are giving you some love thank you for for your service dylan burns thank you for uh actually standing up for your community stuff like that and um i gotta say you know huge appreciation on you know massive respect from from me here as well if there's anything we can do to help you obviously just let us know um because i agree um something that i've talked about on this panel anybody or on the show panel hey, on this hey, show mama, here's thing. my one request if yeah. i get arrested in one of these things yeah uh you gotta start a bail fund okay? oh obviously fucking yeah i would fucking do everything i could to bail you Are you kidding me i'm not gonna let one of my friends get fucking locked up are you kidding me because midway through the pro protest, my roommate said, "I'm not bailing you out if you get arrested." So. Fuck, fuck them! I'll listen. If you get if you get arrested, I promise I will pull every connection that I can to help get you out. Listen, that's a promise. It's on VOD. All right. I'm happy so, to hear it. Yeah, I'll do whatever. I'll pull every connection I can. If I gotta fucking go ring Vosh's doorbell, I'll fucking do it. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Listen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dylan, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Dylan Burns TV on Twitch is where you can follow Dylan. Dylan does incredible, incredible work on that uh, channel. So go give Dylan a follow and consider following Dylan Burns 1776 on twi Twitter. On Twitter. That's your Twitter one. So yeah, yep. um, thanks or for coming on. on YouTube right now, just type in Dylan Burns TV on YouTube and subscribe to me there because I'm almost at 5K subs. It'd be really cool if I could hit it. And tomorrow yeah. I'm going to upload my full review of what happened there. There you go. You can watch that tomorrow then. That'll be great. Dylan, thank you so much. Thanks for coming by, and I hope you have a wonderful night. I will uh, talk to you real soon, okay? See you later. Bye-bye. All right, everyone. That was really, really good. I'm really, really, really glad that we got to talk to Dylan Burns. Um, Dylan is amazing, as you can tell. Sorry, that was a heavy topic, but sometimes we got to talk about heavy topics. A um, little bit of bonus content for all of you who've stuck around this.